Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about this post and what it means. It's kind of funny, they call it tabletop magic esports, but it really means just competitive paper magic. I don't know why they need to call it tabletop esport. I don't know why an esport would be on a tabletop. I think that's the exact opposite. But regardless of this information, I'm just going to go ahead and talk about what this means for paper magic and what this means for your local game store. One of the things on my bucket list was to operate a local game store. And I knew I would lose money. I was a little surprised about how fast you lose money. Uh, a lot of the one thing I did not calculate on was, so I put my store in a relatively dangerous area in the main street of Humble, which if you've ever been there, there's lots of bars, there's lots of drunk people, and it's walkable from the police department. So when people get released from the police department from holding, uh, they kind of walk it off, right? Uh, and, and wait until they someone picks them up, I guess, and sometimes they go to the park. So the park is kind of a, it's like one of the crappiest parks ever. It's not even like a real park. It's just kind of like a sitting area. Well, that's pretty close to my store. And you can imagine a lot of merchandise went missing and things of that nature. That's neither here nor there. Um, today, I'm just going to talk about how difficult your local game store has it and why you should help it survive. Your local game store is not running on very high margins. Uh, one very good example is I buy a lot of magic cards from GameStop. You might think this sounds ridiculously idiotic, right? Why would you buy magic cards from a full retailer to resell, right? Well, let me just give you the uh, physics of blister packs. Um, Walmart sells a blister pack for $4.29. I buy it in batches of 100 for 225, 225, 222, or 250, depending on the set and the quantity. So if I'm only buying 100, I'm paying 250 for a per blister pack for 100. If I buy 200, it goes down to 225. If I buy 500, it goes all the way down to 222. And these are the blister packs that you would see at Walmart. Exactly the same. Same people. Now, when GameStop has the same deal for $1.49, which you can go on their website, and I did buy a few of them. I bought some Commander. I bought some Modern Horizons. I bought a lot of things for discount. Especially, uh, a lot of people would just see that price, but they don't realize that GameStop has a pretty aggressive reward program. And you can, if you're buying a lot, you will get lots of points, which then you can use as coupons to increase your reward even more. I think, I don't know if they got rid of the reward program, but I, they must have grandfathered me in because I'm under the old one. I think they got rid of them at, at all, but all of them, but maybe they, for whatever reason, I still have access to it. If you can buy from GameStop at 149 you do have to pay tax. Shipping, if you buy a, Above, I think $35, $55, it's for free. It's free. Shipping is free anyway. So don't worry about shipping. Tax, 8.5%, eight, eight I guess, in Texas, 8.25% in Texas. So you're looking at another 16. Let's just round it at 20 cents. So 150 plus 20 is 170. 170 is a lot less than 2.22, especially when you sell on volume like I do. It should concern a store that GameStop is selling to its customers cheaper, much cheaper, not just by a tiny hair, but much, much cheaper than you're buying from a distributor, a huge distributor. And that's the same with booster boxes, right? You buy a booster box at $79 a box. You're hoping to sell it for 100 You can't really go above Amazon. Amazon's, I think, 95 sometimes for boxes. And then Rudy is what is Rudy, 90 or 80 plus membership, of course. So you always have to calculate the membership fee because that would be unfair not to, guys. How? So the one competitive advantage, the only competitive advantage that you have when you open your store is building a community 
that is willing, that knows they are going to pay more money, but they're going to do so because they like to play in your store. That is the one comp competitive advantage you have over, and not many store owners really take advantage of this, but it is. You have no other competitive advantages. You don't have price, you don't have selection, you don't have singles. There will always be someone who is selling it cheaper than you. There will be always someone with more, there will always be someone with far more selection, I guess, because they have a better website. There will be someone with better customer service. You're not going to, you're just not going to be able to compete with everyone online. And that's what it is. And then if you sell on TCG Player, they take a fee. If you sell on eBay, they take a fee. I mean, it's brutal. It's savage what's happening right now in the MTG market, especially as more people get desperate, they start posting things for cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, which I get. I mean, you're trying to move inventory so you can buy that double masters, right? Okay, so back to your advantage. Your advantage is maybe your customers are going to pay more because they want to play in your uh, store space. Maybe your customer is willing to pay $100 a box, even though they could only pay Rudy 80 or 90 or whatever he's charging. Maybe your customers are willing to pay above price for your commander deck than they would buy from Walmart because they enjoy playing there. And the whole thing about, hey, you make money from snacks and coffee, I think that's way overblown. Number one, you need a food license unless for like coffee, and espresso, or um, any heated food, right? So if you want to sell like Twinkies or Ho-O's or what, what is it called? What, whatever that's called. Um, you can, you can sell chips and soda and, but if you want to own a coffee store, or especially if you want to own a bar, a alcohol license is really expensive. I don't know if those places even break even. They would have to sell quite a bit of alcohol to even break even, um, when you talk about overhead and then the license itself. It's not easy being a store and your one competitive advantage is now a, not only it is a disadvantage. It is a disadvantage because you're paying for all this space. You're paying for all this space and you are, you're paying for all this space, which is overhead. And now you have to charge higher online prices, but there's no advantage to that space anymore. When previously the advantage was, you know, there is something called, you know, if you see a store and there's people playing, they're smiling, they're not smelly, then people do want to come in and check out the store. I mean, if this is marketing 101. The best advertisement for your store is people actually in your store. People don't want to go to a store where there's no one there. Let's just say what it is. Uh, this is probably the death of local game stores as it currently is situated where you go in, you play the game and you have a lot of fun. Then you go ahead and I cannot see this model surviving because it it's based on everything that social distancing is against. Many people in a small space, like let's say a pre-release, one of the most profitable events for a Magic store is pre-release. A, because a lot of the prize support is free, and they actually send you quite a bit of prize support. And B, because there are new players, that's like new customers, right? Customer acquisition in the fields that I do marketing is really expensive. How much does it cost to acquire a new customer? Well, in a pre-release, they just kind of come and now you get to pitch them the store, you get to pitch them the community, and maybe they come back and buy something a little later. And that's really good. And like I said, in any business, so whenever um, people ask me about business and they want to start a business and 
the best advertisement for a business is customers. The more customers you have today, the more customers you will have in the future. That's why the first two years are hell because you don't have any customers and it takes forever for you to accumulate any. Like, you know, the IRS doesn't expect you to make money in the first two years if you are a small business because no one knows about you. No one's heard about you. The best way to make money in any business, be it Magic the Gathering, be it Pokemon, be it whatever, is to have customers talk about you to other, to their friends, families, to other prospects. Then those prospects come in, they become customers. Now your original customer is still going to tell everyone they know if they had a good experience. And then reversely, if they had a bad one. But now that new prospect becomes a customer and you acquire that for zero dollars. You know, a lot of these very, uh, these uh, unicorn, these billion dollar startup companies, they pay out the nose to acquire new customers. Like Uber pays an insane amount to acquire not only a new customer, but also a new driver for Uber, which is essentially their customer, right? Their Uber driver is a former customer to Uber the main business. And they spend billions of dollars acquiring customers. Uh, these meal delivery plans, I mean, we pay $40, $45 a lead uh, to acquire a lifetime customer at my meal delivery plan. For pre-release, literally it's 100, maybe 100, maybe you have 20 regular. Regular people don't actually go to pre-release, FYI, uh, because they go to sleep. But you're talking about 80 to 100 new people who have may some of them may never have been to your store before. And if you can put on a good event for them, oh yeah, they're going to come back. And they're going to bring their friends. Uh, anyway, bye guys.